Hey everybody, it's Master Gallon Guys here, bringing you my review on the latest episode of Arrow, Lost in the Flood. So, this episode was overall pretty good. It started off in the beginning from the ending of last week's episode, showing Dark powered up by all the deaths that that nuclear missile had caused. And Oliver and John barely escaped, and were pretty much setting up their plan of trying to find where Thea was, and where, their, where uh, Dark had put his arc. So... They figured out where her last location was, and like, uh, Felicity, are there supposed to be any sewer accesses here in the city plans or anything? And they're like, um, no, that's kind of weird. So they were able to get through and get in there, and they were kind of confused. They're like, there's pretty much a whole city under here. It's kind of creepy, too. So making their way through, they finally find Thea, and she's been drugged with a mind-altering substance, and pretty much started kicking Oliver's ass. And then Merlin's like, ha ha ha, doing his mustache twirl pretty much. And as they were about to pretty much take him down, John comes out of nowhere and does covering fire, which starts a pretty cool action sequence. And then pretty much running from the ghost, but also like shooting behind themselves and like doing all sorts of cool stuff and doing a lot of cool fight moves throughout. It was really pretty cool. As this is going on, Felicity... Her father Noah and Curtis are trying to make sure that nobody else can get back in and get Rubicon because what they had done is pretty much a 24 hour failsafe, kind of give them some buffer room. And as they were doing that, they had to deal with Felicity's mom being kind of ticked off about her uh, father being there. And then Felicity came out and said, yeah, for the past three years, pretty much, I've been working with Green Arrow. And she's like, all right, we'll talk about this later after you're done saving the world. So... As they're pretty much trying to figure out a way to stop anybody from getting back into Rubicon, Dark brings back uh, Felicity's old boyfriend, and he starts doing his mayhem, pretty much screwing with their computers and having electricity feedback, doing stuff to pretty much try and, if not incapacitate him, kill him. So Curtis was able to figure out a way to feed back the loop and pretty much shot the little shit right back out. And it was pretty funny because he flew across the room and Dark's like, okay. Whatever. And they were able to get Rubicon back to pretty much nobody could really go at it. They used the technique where if you try and do too many uh, attempts at a password, that it would lock them out of the system. And it was pretty cool. And Felicity's mom actually came through and said that she had lied to Felicity that they had walked out on her father, not him walking out on them. Which kind of makes her a hypocrite. Since she's always kind of like getting on for people with lying and everything, even though she lies. And same with Felicity and Oliver, because guess what? She didn't tell her mom until this episode that she was doing vigilante kind of stuff. Oh, but I can't not tell you about a son that I've got, because that's what the mother told me to do. Oh, well. But as it kept going on, it was pretty interesting, because then it goes back to... Um, the arc and everything, and they were able to get Thea back under control, and it was kind of really quick, because Oliver's like, think about who you are, you could beat this, blah, 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 and it took her, like, all about ten seconds to get back to normal, I'm like, that was easy. They always kind of screw with Thea, and it's like, okay, and then they figure out that, uh, Anarchy's pretty much doing more stuff around the base, and they're like, oh god, we've got to stop him. And he captured Ruve Dark and, uh, Dark's daughter. I don't know if they've given her a name or not. Or they use it so infrequently. I can't remember. And he's doing his evil mustache stuff. And she's like, if you destroy this place, no place will be safe. She's like, eh, I don't give a crap. And then they come in. They have a pretty cool fight sequence with him. And right before he pretty much leaves, Oliver shoots an arrow at him, and he kind of catches it, and then uses it, and kills Ruve Dark, and I was like, all right, it was kind of weird how she went, but I'm glad she went, but they rescued uh, Dark's daughter, got her out before everything pretty much started blowing up and everything, and Dark was not, this is him at his worst now, he's like, screw it, I want Rubicon, and I want to burn the world, because this is the first time I mean, he's been villainous, but this is it. He's unleashed. He's unchained. He's going to do shit. And that's going to put him in interesting territory. He's got strength now, and he's going to use it. So they're going to have to kill him or stop him or something, and I don't know how they're going to do it. I mean, Oliver's 
did at one point in one episode be able to counteract the effects of Dark's magic, but he should have been able to do it even if he was amped up. I don't know what they're going to do. Then we also had the flashbacks, which are pretty much useless at this point because they're not really doing much. It just showed that Oliver's partner that he was with has pretty much been corrupted by the idol. And Raider came back and was like, all right, I'm going to try and get the idol back, even though it's kind of moot at this point because she's super roided up and pretty much can kill anybody she wants. So I'm really disappointed in the flashbacks. They really have not been adding as much as they could have been adding during this season. But overall, I'm kind of glad where everything's kind of going direction-wise. Even though it's not at the peaks that it's been, it's at least trying to build back into a good spin of things. They've at least been dialing down the annoyingness of Felicity, even though she's not at the point that I would like her to be yet. We'll see. And Curtis, they've, oh, they kind of flipped the switches. They kind of upped Curtis's annoyance factor a little bit in this episode and kind of downgraded Felicity's. So we'll kind of see where they go from here. I'm really excited to see where the season finale goes because they have to do something with Dark. They have to have a countermeasure for that thing. They, you, you've you got to watch out when you build up a villain to a point where it looks like you can't easily take him out. But I've, I've got some faith. I mean, the writers have not completely and utterly thrown cross from the wind and jumped a shark like bones. Yet. So, those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you agree with me, you can disagree with me. If you liked it, if you didn't like it. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.